Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Ask Service Monster show where you've got questions for your service business and we've got your answers. Okay, before I get started, Justin can totally cut this out if he wants. Forgive my kind of subdued demeanor today. I just came back from Vistage Group where they focus fired four hours in Service Monster and yours truly, and it was brutal and I'm shell-shocked, so there's that. Today's question comes from Corey. He sends me kind of a short little message. How do I beat my competition? Well, that's a whole can of worms, and I'll start with saying your best competitor is always yourself. Making sure that you're always on a path of self-improvement and that you're better than you were the day before. If you just stick with that, you're going to go very far very quickly. But let's chat about it five strategies you can use to outpace your competition. Number one, I'm gonna start with the basics, man. Pick up your phone, be well kempt, keep your equipment under control, clean, maintain, right? Make sure that you don't smell, <laughs> that you answer your phone on a regular basis, that you do what you say you're going to do. If you do those small little things, clients will be absolutely dumbfounded because there are lots and lots of service providers that simply don't do it. And just by doing that, you're gonna stand apart and they're gonna remember you next time. I know I work with a lot of service providers, especially recently, and I appreciate that feedback and those phone calls, that constant engagement of what's going on and knowing that the guy's gonna be there when he says he is and the truck's gonna be clean and the equipment's gonna be good. So keep in mind, basics, it's your most powerful tool. Number two, pricing. So lots of talk on the bulletin boards about pricing and pricing against your competitors. I'm not a fan. Base your price based off your costs and business goals. Uh, and then work on trying to find your clientele to make that happen. Now, are you going to squeeze out $600 carpet cleaning jobs in a highly transient area like a military base or let's say a college area? Obviously not. So you have to be realistic here. But Maybe you should be looking at other markets or depending on your goals, maybe you want to align what it is that you want to do with reality. Basing your price based off your costs plus overhead is going to give you the room you need to grow your company. It gives you more room for hiring good people and then giving them raises as they earn it. And it gives you more horsepower moving forward in the future especially if you're stockpiling a little bit of cash for a rainy day fund. If your equipment goes down and you suddenly need to jump into a new van, are you able to pull that off? Number three, creating Blue Ocean. There's a book, Blue Ocean Strategy. It's a little heady. It's in my list of top 10 reads and I'll probably do a cliff notes on it, but it is a beast of a book. But the general concept is making your value proposition so much different than the competition that most people don't see you in the same vein anyways. Our company is a good example of this. In 2003, when we first started, a SaaS company just didn't exist. We disrupted the software industry by saying you don't need desktop installs. All of our competition were desktop installs, yet we were online CRM, one of the very first, and there was no competition. We created a huge blue ocean. We did it again when we introduced Fill My Schedule where we separate ourselves from the competition by being able to do those reminders for you. Swatch is another good example in the generic uh, 80s, right, when all the kids started picking up the first kind of disposable watches at 20 bucks a pop. And that cost made it really different from the rest of the market and made it what gave it that kind of viralness that it had uh, within the teenage community. And of course, another example, Uber, right? Through disruption there, the taxi service disruption, you know, using your phone, you can just jump in. They created Blue Ocean. There's no other taxis on the app store, right? So think about it in that way. Now, what does it mean to a service provider? How can you think about creating Blue Ocean space uh, within your demographic? How about a Stay Beautiful program, like Steve Toburin's Strategies for Success? The, mechanism and service monster that contract supports, allowing you to set up recurring payment from your client and then also schedule recurring services. 
So maybe it's a monthly payment with a yearly service and quarterly checkups. Programs like that don't really exist. Most people can't maintain them. They don't know how to really put the numbers together or sell them to the client. And millennials are buying them. And so there's lots of blue ocean there if you want to kind of capture your clients and put your arm around them. Another example of this is more complete services. If you can do the interior and exterior, pressure washing, window cleaning, carpet cleaning, right, some of the base maid services, if you have the horsepower to do that, that's a pretty unique position and gives you dominance over the whole cleaning category. So I've seen that work very well and it creates a, a dominant force if you have good client retention strategies in place. How about white glove service? Super high end. Are you brave enough to approach that market uh, and then charge accordingly? Very few are, but there's huge blue ocean there if you can pull it off. I'm not saying it's easy and there's certainly areas that will support it and areas that will not. You kind of have to figure that out on your own, but that's a good example of a service provider being able to create a blue ocean. Easier one for general mom and pop, how about pet focus? Right, I've seen this pulled off in a number of places. Uh, Larry from Unique Larry in Chicago really built a five, six, seven truck business out of pet focus. He even has his dog as a mascot, Willie. So, you know, it can be done and you can create your differentiation so great that the rest of the competition isn't even with you. Number four, when they turn it down, you turn it up. What's the first thing to go in the expense timeline when things start getting crunched? Marketing dollars. Marketing dollars lead to less leads. Less leads mean less sales. Less sales mean less revenue. And what do they take off? Marketing. Don't do that. Seriously don't do that. That should be one of the last things to go. It is feeding your pipeline, especially if it's working, right? If you've got some dead dog campaigns, yeah, think about moving funds around, but you don't want to just stop your client retention efforts or your marketing efforts. And that folds right into client retention. If you're really going to differentiate yourself from the competition, if you really want to grow, if you really want to make that commitment to yourself and you don't have a client retention program in place at this time, what are you even doing? Like, get that solved fast. The difference between a $250,000 service company that's stuck and a million dollar service company that's not stuck is a 35% spread on repeat rate because they have an intentional and strategic client retention program. All of the stuff on the paper means nothing if you don't have that. And number five, if you're looking to grow, get off the truck as soon as possible. You guys have heard me talk about this before, but I gave it a new brand name, Hell's Valley. And it has to do with the between two and six employees. Life is not good in Hell's Valley. If you're a single owner operator and you got a helper, you can have a pretty good life. You get seven or eight employees and you're gonna build some layers and differentiation and get yourself off the truck, you can start to have a good life. And that accelerates quickly if you've got a good lead engine. But man, in Hell's Valley, that's where a lot of cleaners just throw in the towel or something will piss them off and they fire sell the whole team and then they scratch their head wondering what to do. Like I've seen it more than once. So get out of Hell's Valley as quick as possible, but it means creating a plan and sticking through it to get off the truck. You wanna compete with your competitors, you gotta be in a strategic position to think about your business in relation to your demographic your competition, and most importantly, yourself yesterday. Okay guys, three things to wrap up, five ways to beat up your competition. Number one, cover the basics. Answer your phone, show up on time, have good communication, and make sure your pricing is right. Number two, client retention. Number three, if you're trying to grow as a goal, get off the truck as soon as possible. That will help accelerate growth from that point forward. From everyone here at Service Monster, thank you so much for your attention. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go check out the demo. Give us a call.